Hi there and welcome to this Nuke tutorial uh, where I'll be covering some cleanup techniques. I'm going to try and remove this person walking across the screen uh, using some 2D tracking, uh, planar tracking techniques. Uh, not using Nuke's new planar tracker, just using standard 2D tracking within Nuke. So first off we've got a Kia node uh, with a just a Luma key um, looking through the alpha channel at the moment. Um, we're just going to pull a, a simple key just to create some contrast in the alpha channel and with the tracker we're going to track um, currently transform rotation and scale using all channels R, G, B and A. Um, now we're going to track some features on the wall. I've chosen these um, vertical lines as a starting point um, because they're in the same uh, place roughly as what we need to clean up. Uh, essentially we'll be painting that wall back over that person so she appears as though she's not there. Now I'm just going backwards here in the in the track and straight away we can see that there's some problems with some obscuration. Her leg is actually going to go over those uh, those tracking features. So what we need to do is we need to do an offset track by holding the control or the command button on a Mac um, and moving to somewhere in a similar position uh, that doesn't get obscured. Um, so that's worked fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to where we started the track and go the other way because we started halfway through because it's a good place to get some features. So going back the other way, we just clear the offset uh, for those two trackers, so they go back to the original position that we set up, and we'll just hit play on the tracker and go all the way through to the other end. So we can see that the tracker is now successfully running through to the rest of the clip. We'll just review that, and we can see that those two tracking features are still in the right place, which is good. Um, so we've got a good track of the wall there, which we can now use to help to create our cleanup plate. Now I'm just going to quickly uh, use a sticky note here just to uh, show you what I'm doing on screen. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste this tracker just to have a backup of it um, because we're going to make some changes to it and we just want to have a backup in case we accidentally mess something up. So first off what we're going to do is we're going to change the transform properties from uh, none to stabilize within the transform tab. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just scrub through that and have a look and we can see that it's now stabilized our clip but there's a couple of problems we can see there's a bit of rotation on that um, because we did have rotation switched on within our tracker when we did the track just quickly untick those and that will get rid of that rotation being applied so now we can see we were just transforming uh, the X and the Y and there is a scale but it's so in so small that we can't see it so what we're going to do now is we're just going to rename our tracker to be called tracker underscore stabilize and within the transform tab we're going to change the property over to stabilize. We're just going to duplicate what we've got there and we're going to change the name to match move and in the transform tab we're going to do the opposite of uh, changing it to match move. Now what that does uh, if you we're viewing the match move now is that basically puts our image back to where we started. Um, if you look through the stabilize, the image is going to be slightly uh, weird looking, it's, everything's in the wrong place. Uh, in order to fix that we create a constant which is a lot bigger than that and then we place that underneath. Um, and we once we view that, we can see that um, if we use a 2K constant which is way bigger, we can see that we've got uh, our image, um, this is through the stabilize and then through the merge we can see we've got a much better working environment. It's a bit too big though, so we're just going to change that to uh, 2K Super 35, and, and that's that seems a bit, a bit better. I'm not wasting too much space there. Um, so the next step is to add a time offset. Now with this time offset, I've chosen a value of minus 17. Now in order for us to clean this character up, we need to time sample back enough to um, get a, a bit of the image where she's not standing in. We can see that that's happening there. Um, I've not gone too far off with the value um, because there could be some lens distortion with the camera moving so much um, so the, the image would actually be slightly distorted so we're trying to keep it as close to the original time value as possible just drawing a roto shape around her and we're going to use the alpha replace the alpha there and use a pre-mult so we can see we've got uh, the layers separated now we just need to place that over the actual girl not over the time offset value so what we can see here is I'm just doing a, a rough roto uh, of this character, this person walking across the screen. I'm just going to merge that back 
before the match move and if we view our match move we can see now that our simple roto shape with our time offset has basically removed our girl from that current frame so what remains is that we need to basically continue this roto shape throughout the rest of the shot so what we're doing is we're viewing through the stabilized plate so this roto shape that we're creating this garbage match garbage mat of sorts uh, is essentially uh, the area that we want to be replacing with the background via the time offset but if we view it through where we're viewing it we can see where we need to cover the girl and uh, we can basically see what we're doing so I'm not being super tight with this it's being it's fairly loose roto um, the shadow could be a problem and we might need to extend that roto shape uh, this tutorial was done in a bit of a rush and I'm uh, just going through uh, it's as you can see it's playing back quite fast I'm not actually that fast at working this is it's playing back a little bit faster than normal um, otherwise it would be a, a little bit of a longer tutorial I didn't want to bore you guys um, so this roto shape is just just kind of loosely covering the girl um, and once we look through the uh, time offset we can see that we'll be just replacing a, a clean background over the top of this roto shape via that pre-malt uh, and that merge back over the top of the stabilization so as you can play you can see the the image is moving from uh, top to bottom and that's basically our stabilized doing all its hard work to make sure it stays in the same place uh, and if we look through that pre-malt we can see that there's our clean image and it's being merged back over the top now one potential problem we might have with a shot like this we've got these foreground elements, these uh, pillars and this bin um, they might slightly float if we, uh, we've tracked our, our position to the wall which is a lot further behind these foreground elements um, so if we're not careful we might get a little bit of stretching so this foreground bin um, which made a little bit of an effort to just make sure I'm not including it in our uh, roto shape um, there are ways we can fix these we would have to probably put a paint node and paint out those edges and just kind of roto the shapes and merge them back over the top but um, so far we've probably got away with not needing to do that um, so we're just kind of just kind of scrubbing through the shot and making sure we've got the girl um, you know we've got a few places where the roto needs a little bit of cleanup we're just going to pay a bit of attention to that make sure that we've we've covered her shape and she doesn't poke out um, there's a few places where it's probably inevitable but we can always go back and tidy those up later on so looking through our pre we can see we've got a, a patch of clean background that we're now just kind of overing over the background and um, thankfully this stabilize makes this a lot easier we're just going to add a bit of a feather to that roto shape uh, just to soften those edges a little bit um, and if we just play through this shot now um, we can see that we've already got a pretty good cleanup already there. There's a few problems there. One thing you can see on the um, there's a little bit of her shadow popping through there. Um, so I think I'm just going to tidy up that roto just to extend it to to cover that shadow. As I mentioned before, this could be a problem. Um, we the, we could just choose a different time offset frame and and play around with that. But um, for the purposes of progress through this tutorial, I'm just going to do a a bit of a sloppy cleanup just to just to get that shadow covered and make sure we're not um, having to redo a lot of work just for the purpose of this tutorial. So we're just going to go through some more of this shot and just make sure we've got a little bit more of that shadow covered. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a little bit obvious that there's a, a floating shape uh, traveling across the shot. We could have replaced the entire length of that shot and we would not have to worry about that shadow, but then we would also lose uh, a lot of the lighting and the reflections that happen in those those glass uh, windows um, so this method is to try and replace as little as possible in order to keep a lot of the, the natural uh, lighting conditions and the grain of course so here's one of the problems that we've uh, come across now because of this pre and this stabilize there's a section of black coming through um, so what I'm going to do is just going to create a rectangular shape and in the color of that uh, roto, I'm just going to put black in the color and the alpha just to kind of eat back through um, and I'm just going to um, go through this roto shape and do what I did before and just kind of 
cover the frames that uh, the black is coming through. Uh, now the problem is that I'm actually introducing the bottoms of her feet and a little bit of shadows, uh, but we'll come across that later. This is just a, a quick method to tidy up that black, because that black will be a lot harder to get rid of. There's a lot more of it than uh, the tips of her toes and a little bit of shadow on the floor. So I'm just going to go through the frames that we've got this um, this black problem and just keep shifting this roto shape just to make sure we've covered. You can also see there's a, there's a long line on the left of the screen as well, on the edge of the screen, which is uh, a similar problem, but I'm going to approach that in a slightly different way uh, in terms of cleanup. So the, the, the floor section is actually working pretty good. I'm going to create another... Um, uh, another time offset here and this time I'm going to go the other direction instead of going back in time I'm going to go forward in time uh, just so we can sample a, a different area so this is before she's walked into that area because we've got a bit more of that ground before she's um, walked through it <clears throat> now this is a slight variation on the same technique what we're going to do is we're going to use a paint node uh, and plug the paint node um, below the pre -malt. so this is where our, our problems coming so we're just going to plug it in below that and within the paint node you'll notice there's another little arrow and there's BG1 poking out the side uh, and you've got multiple BG inputs there so with this other BG we're gonna use the reveal um, and basically we're revealing the other patch which is the other frame so I'm just going through the frames that we've got those bits poking out and we're basically revealing the time offset forward now so we're going back the other way so all I'm doing is just literally painting through uh, individual frames just to make sure um, her feet aren't poking out. You can see a bit of that paint extending towards the bottom. If you wanted to, you could actually go through this entire shot using this method of just painting. Instead of doing the roto shape, you could basically use a big paintbrush and just paint through um, backgrounds. And if you like painting, uh, it's a bit more fun, but it's probably a little bit slower doing every frame. Now, I forgot to mention that in the paint node, um, when, you're, when you've selected reveal, you need to choose um, BG1 and that's what you're revealing is you're revealing background one which has your your time offset of uh, positive 12 I think uh, and that's what's allowing this paintbrush to reveal the background uh, it's a pretty good trick um, and it's it can be quite handy there's a few frames here where um, we're a little too close and we're possibly showing a little bit of her foot shadow coming in but uh, seeing as though we're painting we can always use uh, the roto paint clone stamp uh, and just clone out those small sections which um, are problematic. Uh, there's also possibly you can see there on the left hand side where we've painted there's a tiny little bit of a smear in our new background uh, like a vertical offset. We can always add a transform to that uh, and just to to straighten it up a little bit but otherwise um, this shot's looking pretty good. I mean we've uh, in a short space of time without any uh, camera tracking or any geometry or any camera projection uh, cleaned up a shot um, and we've managed to keep all the original grain and we've not had to uh, degrain and regrain and just you know fiddle with all those other details we've got you know the clean image um, and all the lighting is the same so we're not have to worrying about we re readjusting lighting on a you know still image that's projected so going through the final few frames there, adding some paint just to get rid of those black artifacts um, and we're pretty much done. Uh, we're just going to preview the shot and have a look and um, see how that's looking. See how our quick cleanups worked. There's just a couple more frames. Quick clean up here. Okay, I think that's probably the last one there. Uh, yep, that's looking good. Um, okay, so we're just going to zoom out a little bit and we'll have a look uh, and we'll see uh, how that cleanup's working. Um, I'm just going to quickly add that transform just to straighten up that little offset that I was talking about before. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, so we'll just add a little crop node at the bottom just to get rid of any uh, extra edges we've created. Um, and it's working pretty well. We can see the reflection of a van is actually still kept in that background glass. Uh, if we wanted to, we could remove that as well using this, a similar technique, uh, just merging a still of a section of that over the top. Uh, that would work pretty well. Um, 
One thing I'm just going to quickly run through here is I've just put the the blend mode on the merge to uh, difference. Now what this does is it creates a, a strange looking image. Now the purpose of the difference mode is that we're trying to create um, a black image. I'm just going to quickly put a little bit of a, a mix on that merge as well because the first few frames aren't needed so I'm just going to switch it off uh, and also towards the end uh, it might need to be switched off as well. But So as you can see there's a, a strange kind of pattern um, it's basically putting those two layers over each other uh, and everything that appears as pure black is essentially exactly the same. Now what we're trying to do is make that exactly the same. That's not entirely possible because of uh, lens distortions and sort of you know movements within the camera um, but we can just kind of nudge that um, all our paintwork just ever so slightly. I've done it roughly every 10 frames um, just literally scrubbing through um, decimal values just to make sure that um, our, our layer is kind of sitting exactly where it needs to be. It could be that our tracker wasn't perfect first time round or um, could be the lens distortion but this is just a, a fail safe just to go through and just kind of tidy up and make sure that everything's kind of working. As you can see uh, while I scrub through those uh, values you can see the images moving and creating like a, an unusual pattern. Um, so as you can see, we're just going to nudge the image, uh, very small numbers here, just to make sure um, we get a, a close enough match to the original plate as possible, uh, obviously ignoring the fact that the girl is there and she's no longer there. We're just trying to line the backgrounds up to be as close as possible. You can see it's uh, quite a, a subtle thing, but um, it can help to stop any any extra artifacts popping through and just help the uh, overall image work. Um, so once we get all of that done, we uh, we'll just put the blend mode back to over, and we can see uh, she's vanished. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's a, a good kind of cleanup method. Um, there's different ways you can approach this, and there's different ways you can add to this. Uh, the stabilized method is pretty useful. Thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Nav, and uh, hopefully that was useful and maybe you'll use some of those techniques at some point in the future. Thanks.